Hi, welcome to The Climb, it's a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you gain leverage, create leverage in the music industry. As a matter of fact, that is literally what The Climb means, creating leverage in the music business. I want to introduce you to my uh, co-host and my good friend, Brent Baxter. He's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Annabellum, Joe Nichols, and more. He also helps songwriters turn pro by teaching the art, the craft, and the business of songwriting. And you can find Brent on manversusrow.com. That's manvsrow.com. Hey, Johnny, how's it How going? How you doing, Brent? I'm doing well. Let me introduce you to these guys out here. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey. <laughs> yes, this is my co-host, Johnny Donnell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. It's an innovative artist development company. Not only do they develop and improve your artistry they also grow and monetize your fan base creating what cash flow so daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like colin ray tracy lawrence ty herndon and andy griggs just to name a few you can find johnny at daredevilproduction.com that's production no s singular daredevilproduction.com hey johnny good to see you man good how you doing brother how you doing how you doing I'm good 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 how you doing huh we're doing the italian uh, today i don't huh? know i miss anthony <laughs> oreo he's my buddy i miss him oh i miss anthony oreo too man i just saw him the other night he was incredible oh uh, he's awesome always uh, good gosh he just keeps but, getting better too i didn't know he could do that but he does yeah, he works he works hard he does things so, like that happen what we can talk about today? You've got uh, you got some more wisdom to share with the songwriter community out there that yes, I think is going to be very yes. valuable. Today, I want to talk about five reasons five why five reasons why you need to know why you write. All right, not everybody writes songs for the same reasons. They don't all have the same goals in mind, and so for you to clearly understand why you yourself personally write songs and what you want out of it is very important for your you know future success basically johnny knowing why you write will help you become a happier more successful songwriter i said it i just laid that down that's a big promise i know but i mean it you'll be happier and more successful if you know why you write and we got five things can you see me i just lost you damn it <laughs> oh really you're totally yeah. gone Totally gone. I can see you. So I'm definitely getting the worst end of that deal. I'll have oh, to look at you. you. Don't have to look at me. Back. Hey. Gotcha. Sorry, guys. Go. I got to see my boy. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> five reasons. <laughs> You're Let's looking at me like, I don't. I'm lost. <laughs> I look for my wife. What do you? What do you? You're not my work wife. All right. <laughs> so five reasons. Why songwriters need to know why you write. You will be a happier, more successful songwriter if you know why you write. And that's a big promise, but it'll come true for you. So we got five reasons. You ready to hear them? I am number one. Number one, knowing why you write provides direction. Okay, so if you know why you write, and that's the thing, there's there's no wrong reason to write. Everyone has their own, their own reasons. So you want to clarify in your mind what that reason is, whether it's to write his songs on the radio, whether it's just to you know, impress your girlfriend, whether it's to impress your boyfriend, whether it's just to make your kids laugh, it doesn't matter, it's all good. But knowing why you write, it's gonna be a lot easier to figure out what to do next, okay? So for example, if you write as a way to preserve family history and stories from your family as a way to kind of capture them and record them, okay, then your next step might be to pull out the family photo album, go looking through pictures, you know? And you go, oh, okay, well, this is why I write. To do this by family, this is really what moves me to write. Okay, well, then I don't need to go to a bookstore and try to find ideas and novels. I need to go to the photo album. I need to go to the, the family movies because that's really why I write. I need to go talk to my grandparents or go talk to my aunts and uncles and cousins. All right, so it kind of gives you an idea of what step is next. If it's to get you know cuts and hits, then it may be like, all right, let me start checking out daredevil production or man versus real or you know nsai or ascap bmi or csac that kind of thing start figuring out what the the publishing world is like um so on the other hand you know if you another example if you want to write songs about fishing for fishermen to buy you know that's a different thing you then you know okay well what do i need to do well, i need to focus on writing songs about fishing and then try to figure out a way to get to the market of fishermen so it provides direction makes sense 
It makes sense. I mean, it, it helps you provide direction, but also helps you determine who your audience is going to be. So you're kind of not barking up the wrong tree. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. writing songs about making, you know, this is a crazy analogy, but if you're writing songs about how to make hamburgers and you're trying to sell them within a vegan community, I mean, nobody's going to care about the lyrics and you're going to get a lot of rejection and it's going to make you feel bad. But if you wouldn't mm-hmm. feel so bad, if you understood that these people doesn't matter how good it is, they're not going to, they don't like the content. Exactly. If, if you realize, yeah, what's going to come out, you, you realize what to do next. And which leads to the second point, point number two, knowing why you write clears the clutter. In other words, it not only helps provide a direction for your writing and what to do next, it helps you identify what you should not be doing. So in the hamburger analogy, do not go to the vegan message board. Like, I've got a new song about hamburger, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, so if you write songs to get them recorded by others, okay. And you're, and you're writing to be like myself, I'm a songwriter. I, I have no artist aspirations or ability, but anyway, I'm a songwriter. Okay. My, what, why I write is to have other people record them and get them out to the world. So that lets me know, I don't need to go shopping for stage clothes. I don't need to go get, you know, stagecraft. I don't need to know how to, you know, go record my own record kind of thing. That's not what I need to be doing. I write because I want other people to record my songs. So therefore I'm not going to get distracted with other people, you know, say, say if I actually did have a good voice, you know, <laughs> people saying, you should get out. You should start playing shows. You should start doing this and that. Go get a record deal. Well, if you realize, no, that's not really why I write, you know, I don't need to do that that doesn't fulfill my ultimate goal. That's not why I'm writing. So I'm, it clears a clutter. So uh, also, you know, if you, um, you know, I would also, it it tells me I don't need to book my own shows. I need to go to shows of people that might record my songs and go meet them and make connections with those people. I don't need to be the one on stage. I need to beat the people that are on stage. So also like if you just write songs just because you want to see kids light up and dance in the living room. Okay you know, you can stop making videos and putting them on YouTube trying to get views because that's not why you write. You write for those kids in that room, you know, your nieces and nephews and cousins or whatever. So you just need to find the kids in a living room. So it helps clear the clutter helps. uh, There's so many distractions and and other people's thoughts and maybe what you should do and what you should not do that it's easy to kind of get pulled in one direction or another. But if you know why you write, it's a lot easier to say no to things you should be saying no to. Yeah. That's right. So, I like that. So uh, point number three. Point number three. It helps you find your tribe. Uh, you alluded to this uh, with point number one. It helps you find your people. It helps you to find your audience. The people that, uh, and by tribe, it's, uh, it's a phrase I've gotten from Seth Godin, who's a great author and, and marketer and everything. And it's your tribe is that group of folks who care about the same things you care about. They're your people. You know, they share similar interests, pass- passions, goals. So, Say if you, you know, to find your tribe, say if you write songs about your love of beer and you like to write drinking songs and party songs, okay, you probably shouldn't go looking for co-writers at a church choir convention. Right. It's probably not the best place to find your tribe and your people that are be like down with what you're selling and wanting to write about, okay? So you want to go find people playing in a honky-tonk, you know, to find people to write that kind of music with because obviously they're, they're a better fit for what you do. And sure. if you're not sure about your right, you're just kind of riding here and there, and you're not really clear on that. You can end up kind of barking up some wrong trees, getting some misaligned co-writes, and it just kind of gums up the works a little bit. You're not running as efficiently as you could. You know, that brings up another point, too, when you're talking about tribe, is uh, especially if you are a writer whose intention is to uh, to get other recording artists to record your songs, then mm-hmm. you need to know about that tribe, and what's yes. the what's the tone and the uh, belief and the, uh, the the product that that, that tribe has? You know, mm-hmm. we were uh, Daredevil. We were producing a, a record for um, a multi platinum artist named Colin Ray, and we put out the the tip sheet and said, "Hey, here's what we're looking for: big, rangy love ballads." You know, it was a last minute kind of a thing, mm-hmm. and uh, people we got. I mean, if you know Colin Ray. He's very positive. He's a very spiritual man. Uh, you'll never mm-hmm. hear Colin Ray singing about cheating 
singing about drinking, shooting whiskey. That's never been his lane at all artistically. But we got so many right. of those songs, and I'm just like, you, you know, like this is so that that came to me on a producer aspect in the form of a rejection. Mm-hmm. Like I don't need this, but it's not because the song sucks. It's because this isn't even anywhere near appropriate it's- for the artist that I have. This is the wrong tribe. You're in the wrong wrong mm-hmm. area. You know. So think about that too. I think that's another way to put it to, to connection to make on that, you know? Yeah. And, and knowing why you're right, when it comes to writing within that reason, your stuff's going to be a lot stronger, have a lot more integrity, meaning it, it it's of one piece, you know, it's not double-minded, you know, for someone that really wants to write, you know, gospel music and is really what their core is, but they haven't really identified that they're not going to feel as honest if they're writing in a sheet and songs authentically and vice versa. You know, if they're not, someone's not spiritual minded, they don't really care about that stuff, but they're in a room with a co-writer and they end up writing that stuff. It's not going to be as authentic because it's not, it's not their thing. So right. knowing why you write, you know, which is really point number four, it helps you spend your time and money wisely. Okay. So if, if you're really writing to hear your song on the radio, like I want to hear my song on the radio. Well, then I don't need to spend time and money demoing this novelty song that I wrote about Russia or whatever. There's something that's really not going to fit on the radio, even though I think it's a really cool song and it's funny and it makes people laugh, whatever. Yeah. But ultimately, why do you write? It's to get songs. Is that the kind of thing that's no, you're not going to get your Russian novelty song spending your time doing that. And also like, you know, you know, you don't have to watch hours of YouTube videos and stuff on how to write hit songs or education about how to write hit songs. If you really just want to write to cheer sick kids in a hospital, those are two different things. They're both, you know, fine as goals. But when you really get clear on, okay, this is why I do this. This is what really turns me on about music. Then I don't have to feel like, you know, because I've done a lot of mentoring one-on-one sessions with writers. And, and that's one of the first, first things I asked them, like, what are your goals? Why do you write? Because I try to, because they're walking through my door or lighting me up on Skype, that their goal is to write hit songs or country songs or what. They'll have their own reasons. And I could, I could waste a lot of their time if I'm trying to, you know, shove them in one direction without us kind of getting clear on really what they want to do. So, Clarity yeah. is, is important, you know, and I find, I mean, I'm going to throw this out there real quick before we get to the last point, but I find that it's a human um, flaw. Uh, it, it's an, it's almost like a defense mechanism. We sometimes as artists, especially because we're very intense and we're very, um, we're very vulnerable. We're very sensitive. We, we, it's easier to be unclear and unaware and spread yourself too thin uh, because that mm-hmm. way then you're not too bought into one thing and it, you feel like it's not going to hurt as much, but that's what works against you. You know, you've really got to dig yeah. down and, and trust in yourself that you're going to find the answers. You know, you're going to, you're, you're a smart person. You're going to go down, you're going to make a couple of mistakes. You're going to figure it out. You're going to learn what you need mm-hmm. to do and you're going to get better at it if that's what you really want to do. But clarity is key. You know? It is. It's huge. So number and, five. Uh, number five, it lets you know which advice to listen to and which advice and criticism to ignore. Okay. So for example, and I've been using weird examples, but you know, you post a song online and some bonehead out there starts ranting about how your song, this is how you milk a cow will never get on today's country radio. Okay. But I like to educate and entertain kids about like farm life. Okay. That's what was like, no, that's why I write. You can just laugh and go back to writing songs about cows. Okay. So, you know, okay. I don't need to listen to that, that criticism. That's not, it's, it's going to bounce right off me. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't hurt my feelings because that's not what I'm trying to do. But if say somebody comments on there, man, okay. I was confused for the whole first verse. I thought you're talking about being an astronaut and I, I was lost. Then, you know, Oh, then I'm not fulfilling my purpose with this song. That is something I need to listen to because if I'm trying to educate kids on like farm life and entertain them, I was not being clear. So knowing, you know, what your purpose is, not only for why you write overall, but also for each song helps you understand what advice and criticism to listen to and which ones not to. Same thing about, oh man, your singing is pretty bad. Yeah, I know. I'm just a songwriter. I'm not trying to be an artist. That's cool. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to get something out there for the demo singer to understand so he can sing it or she can sing it. That sort of stuff. Right. I got a really great you know, or story. Oh, it's not really. Yeah. 
that'll pertain to that. And it has to do with when you and I first met, like um, it was outside oh. the, in the parking lot of the studio on music row. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember talking to you and I remember you had a thermos in your hand and you had like number one in scribble and number two in a scribble <laughs> marker and number three in, in handwritten marker scribble on your thermos. And I kept trying mm -hmm. to like be cool and, you know, because we just met for the first time, and I'm this Brent Baxter, you know, hit song, right? I'm trying to be cool. Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, and I'm, but I'm trying to read, like, what the heck do you have written on that? <laughs> and it's like, all right, look, I can't take coffee off. thing. Yeah. What is on your coffee thermos? And you're like, oh, well, this is some advice I got from another writer, and it was this was so important that I wrote it down. And, and this was you, you're a writer that tries to get, uh, other artists to cut your material. Uh, as you mentioned before, you don't have any artistic uh, aspirations. So it is all about selling your song to somebody else. And uh, I remember you're telling me the story vividly. You're like, well, I, you know, I'm in a songwriting. I, I was playing some, some of my tunes for one of these hit songwriter dudes. And I said, what do you think? He said, I think you'd be a number one hit songwriter in 1996. And, and uh, you know, if you think about like, Tim McGraw's Don't Take the Girl, you know, with the big, with the little kid story. Then he's a middle-aged man with kids. Mm -hmm. And then, then he's an old guy. And, and you know, those are the kind of storylines that happened in the 90s, but that's not what's happening now. And you had to be reminded of right. that. But that's a criticism that you took because, you know what, the, today's market, we're selling, you know, 1996 was blue solo cups. Now it's red solo cups. <laughs> right. I, better be, I better be painting the solo cups the right color or I'm not going to sell them because that's what the market exactly. wants. So there's like a real world yeah. example of uh, a real honest conversation that Brent and I had when we first met about, you know, what you need to be paying attention to and why, you know, like if you're selling mm -hmm. to kids and you're not trying to get uh, Tim McGraw or, or Carrie Underwood to cut your song, then, then, then those kinds of criticisms are, aren't going to matter to you. They're not going to register, you know? Exactly. And that way you learn not to give them power over you because you you understand that's not relevant right and you're you not going to let that kind of you know, that, that negative that negativity rent too much space in your head you know exactly which is important which is gonna, you know that kind of negativity is going to pull you away from your your north you know star yeah that's right, right. your true that, north whatever that reason is. <laughs> exactly exactly well, right on. So, hey, listen, uh, Brent, as always, uh, at the end of an episode here, you are Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. You've got some good information. Uh, uh, Brent has a book, a songwriting book called Think Like a Pro Songwriter. Um, and we're plugging this, but you're giving it away for free. Uh, it it, it doesn't cost anything. It, it, it's going to break down uh, a, a lot of different methodologies, ways of thinking, and uh, an approach to how to really go from – like Brent did Arkansas in college to, and get to Nashville and get in the right rooms and get cut. You know, uh, I think right. some good information there. You can get it for free. Brent, where can they get that from? They can get that since it is my gift to you. You can get it at gift from Brent, B R E N T gift from Brent.com. Real simple. You want to get from rent, go to gift from Brent.com and you can get uh, instant access to it. Just download it. Just tell me where to send it. And we zip it right over to you. Boom, so, love real it. simple. But, I'm not the only Santa Claus in the house, Johnny. You have you have an Amazon bestseller that you are giving away. I uh, do. It's music marketing on Twitter 101, and uh, we broke down. We demystified. Uh, I did mystify Twitter because uh, it was a mystery to me, so I just had to find out what it was about. But we show you how it works, the etiquette behind it, and I set up a strategy. It's an easy read, by the way. It's you know 30, 40 minutes with a strategy that I'll show you how to gain – at least 1,000 targeted followers every single month for just 15 minutes a day, just working 15 minutes a day on Twitter and, and expanding your audience by 1,000 potential people every single month. So uh, you can get that for free at uh, as, as a gift from me as well, giftfromjohnny.com, J-O-H-N-N-Y.com. And uh, just like with Brent, just uh, tell us where to send it. We'll shoot it out to you. And... Um, and then just do me a favor, man. The only thing we ask in return is to hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on social media, and let me know how it's working for you. Yeah, That's what we want same to know. for me. All right. So, uh, old man, production, Man versus Row. Man versus Row.com. Brent, thanks again for a, a, another great episode, man. It was a pleasure hanging with you. This is fun. Thanks for educating me. That's right. Keep climbing, and we'll see you guys at the top.